Self storage development step three, foundations. So watching the foundations get poured for this project was a surprisingly interesting step in this process because I had never actually seen it done before. And I never realized what a group effort it was to get a project of this size done. So before the foundations can be poured, the excavator has to get the foundation area nice and flat and compacted. Once that was finished, the concrete workers had to come in and start by building these forms around the space where the concrete would eventually get poured. And and since this was a slab foundation, this wasn't a terribly complicated project. And because we weren't pouring walls like you would with a basement for a house, it didn't take a terribly long time for this concrete to dry out and cure. But uh, even though it wasn't a complicated job, it was still a pretty big job because this was 27,600 square feet of concrete. It was five inches thick with 12 inch deep footings, which translates to a whole lot of cement, a lot more than it would take to pour a foundation for a house or a driveway. So this is a pretty big project. And between the four foundations, we had to pour two of them on one day and then two of them a couple of weeks later. So at the time that we did these foundations in late October and early November, we had a few problems working against us. First of all, there was a shortage in the raw materials needed to make concrete in Michigan, which luckily didn't make it more expensive, but it did make it a lot harder to schedule when we would get this done because we didn't know on any given day if they would have enough dust to make the concrete the next day. And the reason we had to pour two foundations on one day and then the other two foundations on another day was uh, partially because of weather issues and also scheduling issues. So the weather is very unpredictable in general in Michigan, and it's especially unpredictable this time of year in Michigan, because in the middle of the fall like this, we could have days where it's 70 degrees and days when it's snowing and a lot of different rain and precipitation in between there. And uh, we had to reschedule the pouring of these first two foundations a couple times because of rain concerns. And it started coming right down to the wire because we had the buildings scheduled to be delivered and then start being constructed on a specific date. And as we were getting closer to that date, the foundation still hadn't been poured yet. So we got down to the point where the things had to get poured on Monday because they were getting delivered on Thursday and there was rain in the forecast between those times. So on Monday morning, they started pouring these things at 5.30 in the morning and it took them about three hours to get through the job, maybe a little bit more than that. And luckily the foundations were able to dry out pretty good before it started pouring later that day in the afternoon. And by the time it started raining, thank the Lord, those foundations had dried out enough. If it had started raining like that while they were pouring the foundations, we would have had an awful mess on our hands. So luckily we were able to get those first two done. And after the foundations had dried out enough, they took their power trowel and sanded them off and created a nice sheen. And then later on in the process, they sawed lines through the foundations at certain intervals. The idea behind behind sawing those lines is just to control where the concrete is going to crack because it will crack somewhere and you want to determine where that's going to happen rather than just letting cracks form wherever they decide to show up. So when they pour foundations like this, part of what they do is they put these steel wire grids in the concrete to give it extra strength. And those grids are supposed to be like right in the middle of the cement, I believe, not at the bottom and not at the top. So the guys had to keep pulling it up with their tool as they were pouring it to make sure that those grids would end up somewhere in between the concrete itself. And they also use this laser guided system to make sure everything was perfect. And not all concrete contractors do this apparently, but when they do, it helps get rid of any irregularities or unwanted curves or dips or anything like that throughout the cement. So if anything, it just kind of gave me some added comfort to see this. My friend Charlie actually has a different video about uh, what can happen when people don't use these kinds of lasers, which I thought was actually kind of enlightening. I'll link to that beneath this video if you want to check that out. A couple weeks after all four of these foundations were poured, they had to come back to put this additional skirt around each foundation just to finish it off and expand the footprint of each foundation a little bit to hold the steel bollards in place at the corners of each building. The steel bollards are there just to help protect the buildings near the corners, just in case somebody's taken a corner too tight or if somebody accidentally backs something up rather than destroying the building, it would hit the steel bollard. And that's part of what this skirt is designed to hold in place. And I gotta say, after seeing how many people were involved in this project, just for the first
first two foundations, not even all four of them. There were 26 trucks involved there in at least a dozen workers on site. I didn't actually count how many people there were, but there were a lot of people involved with this. It gave me a new appreciation for how labor intensive this process is and how many hands are involved. And especially when you see the end product and it's just like pristine and perfect. I mean, these foundations can last for centuries into the future if needed. And apparently having weather that is slightly cold is actually ideal because it allows the concrete to dry at a good pace because if it's too hot, they may even have to keep the concrete wet so it doesn't dry too fast and start cracking. So even though the weather was a bit unpredictable, it ended up working out just right for us. And another thing that worked out pretty well is that apparently some subcontractors can get really territorial, like the concrete guys don't want anybody else working by them as they're pouring their foundations, or the excavators don't wanna have to work around people who are putting up buildings and so on. And uh, I don't think any of those subcontractors ever want to have to work around others. But in this case, they all had to just because of the scheduling and everybody had to be in there at the same time working around each other. And to their credit, they did a really good job of coexisting and getting their respective jobs done. So one interesting thing about the design of these foundations is that we were able to construct them with a 1% slope. If you saw the earlier video about excavation, you'll know that this site required a ton of excavation work. And because we had to include a retention pond, the civil engineer engineer had to make the entire property slope just slightly towards that retention pond. And when you're building foundations on a sloped piece of land like this, if you're forced to keep everything perfectly level, then that means at some point you have to include a step down in the foundation when the building is this long, but you don't actually have to keep it perfectly level. You can slope slabs at a 1% grade like this. And uh, we were able to do that. And as a result, we could save some money on extra material needs to make those steps and also the buildings could be a little bit easier to design because we didn't have to chunk the building into steps we could just leave it as one long simple building originally when we were working with our structural engineer who is not from michigan they're from another state they were pretty well convinced that we needed to use what's called a stem wall foundation and a stem wall foundation would basically mean that all of the footings around these foundations would be four feet deep and they also were saying that we needed to put insulation around these foundations. And those two things combined are basically intended to protect the foundations from cracking in the future as the result of temperature fluctuations and the expanding and contracting of the soil as the seasons change throughout the year. And that kind of foundation can certainly be appropriate depending on what you're building on the foundation. For example, if you have a climate controlled building where the temperature in the building is going to be warmer than the temperature of the ground beneath it, then that kind of thing will protect the foundation and be appropriate. However, that's not what these buildings were going to be. They were going to be cold storage buildings with no climate control. So there would not be hardly any temperature difference between the top and the bottom of it. And uh, my general contractor was seeing this proposed design and he recognized pretty much right away that like we do not need a stem wall foundation for this type of building. And he went and talked to his concrete subcontractor who agreed and uh, we ended up changing this to a monolithic slab, which instead of going four feet down around the entire perimeter goes 12 inches down. And we also did not need to include all this insulation like we were being told we needed to. And those two changes together saved us about $300,000 just on these foundations. And it was another example of many examples in this experience of just seeing how many opportunities there are to overspend by a lot if you don't really ask tough questions and get several different sets of eyes on the projects, specifically from local professionals who are familiar with your local market, not somebody from another state who doesn't necessarily understand the norms of construction where your project is located. So that's it for the foundations. In the next step, we're gonna talk about building construction and how that process worked. That was also a fascinating thing to watch. I had never actually sat there and observed it and recorded every step of that process. So it's gonna be a really interesting video as well. Be sure to check that one out and I'll be sure to link to that beneath this video once it's ready to go. So be sure to check out that too. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.